before we actually get into it, I, I've been asking a lot of people the same two opening questions in all the interviews I've been doing. So we'll start with that. For each of you, uh, what movie have you seen the most? Movie I've seen the most is um, probably uh, it's uh, <laughs> Ice Wide Shut uh, and uh, uh, Frozen Two. Oh my god, <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. two. Well, the two is uh, because of my kid. <laughs> of course, yes. just not <laughs> but the other one I just I don't know I just if it's ever on anywhere or if I ever like see it I just kind of compulsively have to click on it and I just enjoy it uh, there's a few that are up there and I just don't know exactly which is which so I'm gonna be perfectly honest I'll name I'll name a few I would say that the um the elephant man uh the harder they come Moneyball, the natural and the sting a few of those might be on my list too um what TV series, Mona, would you love to guest direct? And Casey, what TV series would you love to guest star on? Pride and Prejudice with Jennifer Ely. That one, the Jennifer Ely BBC version from like the, I said the 90s or 80s. Uh, yeah. Um, I'd like to be in what we do in the shadows, but I just don't know if I could pull it off. <laughs> well, you never know if you try. Uh, I, I'm confident in your ability. I think you, well, you're what we call a good actor. <laughs> well, those guys are really funny, man. They are really good, all of them. So, um, but yeah. Um, so a lot of people who do not know about like the filmmaking aspect and the screenplay and how it all came together might not realize the connection of this material with the assassination of Jesse James. Um, can you sort of talk about how Ron and sort of Ron got involved and how you got involved, Casey? Because you're also a producer on this. Ron wrote the novel of Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. Andrew Dominic adapted that one, but Ron is also a screenwriter uh, and has written so many great novels that he's um, obviously, you know, can can write. Um, I I wanted to know if he was other stuff that he wanted to do, and he went and found a, a couple short stories by a friend of his, Jim Shepard, who's also a, a teacher and a pal of Ron's, and... Um, and I think has written maybe a screenplay uh, before this himself. So um, we decided on Jim's story and then he, Ron and Jim Shepard wrote the screenplay together. Um, and for many years, because they were teaching as well and you know had families and weren't being paid. And so they were doing it on the side. And I think that's why it has such a, it's so, so precise and it's so, it, because it's just been, you know, many dozens of drafts over year, over the years. And so they really boiled it down to um, the best version of itself. And then Mona came on and uh, refined it even more and sort of made it, made it her own um, vision. Mona, I want to talk about one of the things that I found fascinating about this is that you didn't use any sound stages. You didn't go for any like fake, you know, for lighting. You wanted to use all natural stuff. I thought the filmmaking in this was so well done. And can you sort of talk about the actual filmmaking and what you wanted to do with the material? Thank you so much. Yeah, no, we, we built everything, which is really uh, exciting to do because then you can, you know, you can build, if we, if I were to shoot in, uh, in um, it's, it's a little bit like shooting on a soundstage, right? Because I can make the houses large enough to accommodate the camera and the roof tall enough to hang the lights and, and to, 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 you know, to, to cre create the images I want to do. So um, I think that it, when I read the screenplay, um, I wanted it to be really, organic natural and sensual and and therefore i thought okay i want nature to to really you i want you to be able to open up the windows and the doors and and feel you know spring come in and see you know the chickens outside and like have that kind of quality to it and have shots that take you from inside to outside and just feel these these um characters connection to to the farm and the farm life around them and and that felt really important in terms of understanding um uh, the stakes 
and how how high the stakes are when you when you uh, when you re- your whole life depends on uh, you know as we've case now talked about before about you know if uh, if your animals are okay uh, if there's um, drought or if there's too much rain or you know all these things you constantly you walk wake up in the morning and you go outside and you look up and you see what what's the weather going to be like and that can really determine the rest of your year or season so that was a lot of the reasons that I wanted to do that and then. I just love shooting on celluloid. I think it's so beautiful and um, exciting. It's something about that, you know, catching, catching uh, you know, little, the, the light, the magic of that and how the blacks are so really true and deep and, and the natural color of the stock. Casey, as a producer, how much are you producing on set and how much are you sort of setting it up prior to stepping on set and then becoming like the actor? if you will. Most of the producing happened in the years sort of leading up to the, you know, 20 days that we're actually standing there uh, shooting. At that point, I become just an actor, you know, mostly. Um, There were some decisions at the beginning that I sort of felt like, you know, once we had started, you know, Mona was really wanted to do film, as she said, and I was sort of as, as a producer, but also as an actor thinking like, oh God, maybe, maybe that's too too expensive or too much of a hassle or, you know, not, it's going to slow everything down, those kinds of things. Um, but then, you know, I remembered that really like a sort of philosophy that I've tried to keep from for over the years, which is that, the you know, you have to sort of play for the coach when you're making a movie and, and, and that's how the team's going to win is uh, so you, for, you know, you, you go along with the sort of master vision and, and that's the directors. And so, uh, you know, I, I pretty quickly just fell into, you know, being a being an actor and just being trying to be a support on set. Mona, did you choose to uh, film certain things at the beginning of the shoot or at the end of the shoot? How did you look at, you know, the schedule and decide with the performances you wanted to bring out of certain people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish that I could do that more. And to a certain extent, that plays into how you schedule your days. But when you only have... Um, when you have a really tight schedule and you have a long screenplay with a lot of text, it it also becomes a lot, <laughs> mostly also about, you know, I have um, I, I have a certain amount of of scenes that need uh, uh, a dusk and a certain amount of scenes that need dawn or 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 or, e- or evening or day, and it just you know you kind of have to break it down that way. And luckily, um, I have such good actors working with me that I that I you know trust that they as long as I could help sort of navigate them in terms of where we were in the story um uh they would they would be fine even though I couldn't you know but you you try you really try to be I you know to 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 especially for Catherine Watterson who plays Abigail and who has you know who's never who's in every scene and and has super incredibly challenging um scenes that she has to do one right after another i tried to 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 help her out but no it's 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 hard to have you know that kind of luxury on a 24 day shoot on that note i have to stop i'm just going to say congrats sincerely to both of you i thought this film was so well done um have a fantastic day good luck with the speed dating thanks thanks man (laughs)